the west side. At once maligned and celebrated, it has endured and survived all of the good and bad times. Always there. Not because they had nowhere else to go, but because it was and is a community connected. A community with roots that run deep. The city owes its celebrity to the West Side. The art culture has always been here, nurtured by shared dreams and sacrifice. Musicians, dancers, artists, photographers, seamstresses, tailors, writers, connected by family, school, church, the barber shop, and the corner store. Through prosperity, riots, neglect, and isolation, the West Side has endured literally holding the city together by its threads. And like anyone else, we love the Jersey Shore. The ocean just blocks away. Whatever happens, the West Side will always be here. Enduring, creating, nurturing, loving. There are always people that will make sure of that. Brian Johnston. I am a video journalist for the Asbury Park Press. My mother, my 82-year-old mother, is uh, she's renting a house down in Ocean Grove. Flew up from North Carolina, and I've been driving back and forth. I live in Neptune. I've been passing by this gentleman's work every day, and I figured this is a story that should be told. It's not COVID related in the era of COVID. And I think people want a little something else to watch and, and learn about. So. holidays I work. I work two and three jobs a day sometimes and I don't have no 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 priority over what kind of jobs I'm gonna do. If somebody's paying I am gonna work and do it. I'm doing right now at my age I'm doing cement work, I'm doing uh, building repair, I'm doing murals a block long, I'm doing canvas paintings and sometimes I'm doing all, all of that in one day. You know so I just wanted an art gallery since I was 18 years old. I just wanted a building to do art in. I've been wanting to do that since I was a little kid, and I never got a chance to do it because I didn't have the money. And then when I tried to get the money the wrong way, I ended up in prison. And so then I ended up painting the prison. <laughs> My art is all over the walls in the prison. You see the thing about that is, when you fall, you get up. You don't, you don't lay down. I don't care what situation, I don't care what the situation is. You fall, you get up. You pull your pants up like a man and you keep on moving. When I came home from prison, the first day I rest, the second day I was working at Best uh, Recreation Center in Plainsville. And um, 
I did so many murals in that building. They had like a hundred rooms in there. Each room was a different theme. SpongeBob birthday party room, uh, jazz room, uh, computer room. I used to walk to the train station, take a train, six o'clock in the morning, get back 11.30 in the night and do it again. Until I finished my painting, finished the work up there, and they were so happy and impressed with it, they paid me really good. So I bought my first car. Bought me a car, then I could travel back and forth. Got jobs all over. By the sweat of my brow, I worked my behind off. You don't let you don't let this life, this world, or anybody else destroy you. But it's not about the money. It's about the experience that I went through, the falls, the get to get up, and the, all the, the the stumbling blocks in my life that have made me who I am today. I'm a respectful businessman. I work hard. I go I go uh, beyond the call of duty. What people pay me for. I want to make sure they call me back again because I do, I have pride in my work. I'm a different person than I was a long time ago, but I wasn't no slimy person ever. So uh, I'm a hard worker and I want to keep doing that. My grandmother used to let me put my art on a, out on her front lawn on First Avenue and Central Avenue. So you, you grew up in the Asbury Park area? Right here in this house. Right here in this house. Right here in this house. I learned how to paint over there in the Bradley School and high school. People in this town here inspired me. Reed, the, owner, the original, uh, you know, one of the original owners of the turf. He let me paint the whole, both sides of his turf. Tony Maples, house on Asbury Avenue. So I painted the whole front of the house and the side of the house, down the steps and uh, everything in the house. That was, that you was know? a famous piece around that's here famous. in the city. That's right. Yeah. When you're walking up his front steps, it looked like you're walking up a waterfall. All the pillars, the porch itself, the doors, the windows, the mailbox, all disappeared into the landscape. And I was looking at the turf, it's deteriorating now. That was my first uh, big thing I did in Asbury Park. And uh, I was thinking about making the turf disappear. But who knows who owned it and you know, the, you know, the city might not, who knows. We are having a mural uh, campaign. Uh, our, everybody knows Larry Walker. He's going to be doing the mural campaign on the turf on Atkins and Springwood, which should bring about enthusiasm. Uh, that should be starting next week. They uh, called me to do it, so I said, sure, I'll be a part of it. I did the first and only one on here, so I'll do the second one. Everything that I have now came from God and faith and hard work. Because he said, by the sweat of your brow, you will prosper. And that's what happened to me. <laughs> that's how God answered prayer. You know, you pray about it, and it's done. The um, Asbury Park African American Music Project I'm doing a, uh, just a mural for them to make this building uh, turn from an eyesore to uh, uh, something positive in the community, inspiration to the uh, community. I love the colors, I love everything. I love everything about it. We need a color. <laughs> Larry does excellent work. Uh, all with admired his paintings. This is a, this is a landmark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did a lot of partying in here. Mm -hmm. But that's why it's still sitting here, because it's a landmark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think about what they're doing with this turf? 
what are they doing with them? Well, I mean, besides this, right now they're freshening up the outside. Uh, yeah. So what's so what it's supposed to be? Uh, yeah. Long overdue. Well, it seems what? like they're trying to get it to be a, uh, a, a music museum. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That would be very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, they can't tear it down. Mm -hmm. You know, and do something with it. It's just sitting there. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the eyesore, even though the, you know, it's a, a landmark. You know, I'm glad they're doing something with it. Mm -hmm. Keep up with the rest of the town. <laughs> you know. <laughs> His work is amazing. I've been knowing him for years and his work is absolutely amazing. Nice work here. Thank you. Yeah, thank when's the club opening up? Oh no, there's no roof or anything here. Oh, there's a towel? Oh, it could be outdoor then, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> That's Mr. Perry off in high school. Wow. Did he look there earlier? Yes, sir. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Nasbury Park, this is Ray Morris speaking. And I just want you to know this is history here. A lot of history, black history. History, period. <laughs> Yeah, my father was one of the original members of the Broadways from Asbury Park. They originated from out of Asbury Park High School. His name was Ray Morris? Raymond Morris. Ray Morris. And I'm Ray Morris Jr. And the Broadways were a well-known group up and down this area here, Springwood Avenue, Orchid Lounge, the Turf, um, the Wonder Bar, even the Convention Hall. And they traveled all over. They had a couple of records out. Gone, gone, gone. Um, you don't know. Sweet and heavily melody. I can't name a few others, but it's a lot more. So what did Clarence Clemens uh, have to do with the Broadways? Clarence Clemens and Bruce Springsteen used to open up for my father's group. Yeah, exactly. that's when we started when right. I got exactly. back from the service. Yeah, yeah, actually, that's when Clarence was in the band. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Clarence Clemens was a sax player in the band, yeah. and uh, Danny Anderson, who's now mm -hmm. with the Coasters, he was the bass player right. in the yeah. band. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we had a group. We had a group called the uh, the Chosen Few. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these guys, that's the group that Clarence played with. Mm -hmm. These guys were very professional, very good. Oh yeah, and that that put us up another level. They were our backup. Band. Yeah. Ronald Coleman, well-known member of the group too. Still singing with them. They did a tribute for them at the Paramount Theater not long ago. And a few other places. And uh, for you who don't know, even Lenny Welch sung with them too. I'm out of Asbury Park High School. Um, I just wanted to speak on my father's behalf in the, in the Broadway's Lenny Welch, Ronnie Coleman, a few others I can't name. And it was, um, 
tribute for me to be able to say this and speak to people out there to let them know what they didn't know. Thank you very much. You came down uh, from Pennsylvania? Yes, we did. Yeah. To see this? Oh, wow. Yes, we did. Well, did one of the things, yeah. Dick yeah. Springsteen and Clarence yeah. fan, so I just bought a Jersey Girl <laughs> mask and I'm from Pennsylvania. Oh, I'm I love that record. I'm not kidding you. I said I'm a Jersey Girl because I love Bruce. So, <laughs> hey. oh, okay. <laughs> Can I get a picture of you in front of his mural? Is that yes. too much to ask? Yes, yeah, ma'am. Thank you. Hi, we're Tom and Mary Ellen Barbarish from Honeybrook, Pennsylvania. And we're Rita and Mike Cook from Honeybrook, Pennsylvania. Then you came we down. We love Bruce and Clarence. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Good enough. Looks great. He did all of it? Oh, yeah. It's great. I like the Mary out in there. Good look. I am loving it. I think it's a great inspiration. It has just added life to this building. And, um, which is good for the whole revitalization of Springwood Avenue. So I'm, I'm very thrilled with it. Uh, Frank Morrison, our scenes, you know, like black lady looking out of a window, you know, with that style and person, he captured all of that. This here's a, 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 a visual uh, style that he captured with paint. You see the guy, he's like, you know, you, you know what he's feeling. He's, he's like laying into it. And you can see it in the little in the little painting he did, and all of his paintings is like that. This is um, sponsored by the African American, the Asbury Park, Park African American Music Project. Project. <laughs> and our goal, among other things, is to tell the story of Springwood Avenue. And part of the story is the Turf Club. And it is our goal, our vision that we are going to save this building, bring it back, make it a combination museum, place for kids to learn how to play music, and a nightclub where you can come and listen to live musicians play jazz and other genres of music. So we had the Environmental Tree, Tree Commission, we had DPW, and the Quality, quality of life. life. Everybody came so efficient, two hours in and out. It's not Amazing. even two hours. We started at 10 of 9 yeah. and it's 10 after 10. Yeah. Amazing community.